All right, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to take you through the advanced clinical trial, some of the lessons and the programmatic implications. So just a reminder, ADVANCE was a randomized control trial looking at dolutegravir along with two different tenofovir prodrugs compared to the then standard of care, which was in a Favrins-based regimen. And this was conducted in Johannesburg, South Africa. The study was extended uh, to run for 192 weeks. And then a smaller observational trial then looked at some of the patients that had been enrolled in advance and transitioned across to TLD into the public sector. Those patients, when they came back, we had a look at some of their metabolic parameters and also their viral suppression. So I'm going to talk us through just two of the scientific lessons because I think if we go into the operational things, we would be here all day. But the first one was weight gain, which I think has been really well characterized. So with advance, these graphs are not new. I'm sure a lot of you will have seen them, but we saw significant weight gain with the use of dolutegravir and particularly TAF in black African women. And this previously was an underrepresented population in the previous trial, so really was a bit of a surprise. Interestingly enough, in Characterize, which was where, we had, where patients had been switched and we brought them back for a single visit, we saw significant decreases once patients had been switched off DTG and TAF, so this in women, where they lost a median of about 1.6 kgs. In males, a slightly different story, but weight gain nonetheless. Again, in Characterize, another interesting thing that we saw is that patients that were switched from DTD, uh, DTG and TAF seemed to do better in terms of their lipid profiles, their HbA1cs. We didn't really see any differences in the viral suppression across the groups. And then that brings us to virologic resuppression. So the one thing that we saw in advance and we've seen in a lot of the other equivalent trials is that dolutegravir was non-inferior. And this really prompted the rollout of dolutegravir-based regimens in South Africa in 2019. So if we're looking at virological failure on the flip side of that, we see that the World Health Organization guidelines has placed huge emphasis on adherence counseling and making sure that we are sure patients are taking their treatment before we switch their regimens. Um, this is obviously not for NNRTI-based regimens. And so this comes off the back of a few studies. So looking at some of the second line studies, um, this looks at patients who were maintained on second line regimens, but those who were failing and switched. And what we saw here is that dolutegravir was very, did as well as the PIs. And then if we have a look at advance, what we saw, like I mentioned, was that patients did really well on their drugs, but also managed to resuppress. So comparing the DTG and efavirenz arms, we saw significantly increased times in suppression for the DTG arms, and also more patients suppressed and maintained that suppression. And this was very similar to what was seen in NAMCEL, where they looked at the efavirenz 400 milligrams. Again, you can see that blue line, where dolutegravir really did resuppress those patients very quickly. So what does this mean for all of us? So there's two points, that dolutegravir offers rapid virologic suppression, um, and like I mentioned, it is non-inferior, so really pushed the rollout in South Africa to these newer regimens. We also see that the high resuppression rates in those with virological failure is in line with the current World Health Organization recommendations. And what we interestingly saw in advance was that over the 192 weeks, in patients who had viremic episodes and protocol-defined virologic failure, there was no development of integrase strand inhibitor resistance. And then the second thing is treatment emergent weight gain remains a concern. And as Sarah has mentioned, it also emphasizes policies around um, monitoring, especially post-surveillance. And this we see particularly with the newer ART and predominantly in black women, which in South Africa is our primary population. And what Characterize showed is that there might be the potential for reversibility. But since we don't really understand a lot of the mechanisms around weight gain, this really has prompted a lot more studies to include weight monitoring and also to look for causes and potential mitigating um, factors. Thank you so much.